What was the purpose of Cole's character being in this movie, Mortal Kombat? He was a made-up character, didn't have anything to do with anything, wasn't really that great of an actor, had some of the weakest lines. He actually also had one of the weakest superpowers, um, some type of absorbent suit thing with a piece of wood or a knife or something like that. He starts off as an MMA fighter who's working for $200 a day. He's getting beat up. Uh, he gets beat up in front of his daughter. Um, he pretty much gets beat up when he's training, when they're trying to teach him how to be a better fighter. Uh, Raiden, when he first meets him, looks at him like, yeah, man, you pretty much, uh, you know, you look like you can't even fight or whatever. But he trains for a couple of days and then he has to fight Prince Goro, who's one of the premium characters of the game, who's like really not a throwaway character. And then he just beats Goro like <laughs> as if he's a, a regular dude on the street. Now, Goro is, you know, maybe 15, 20 feet tall. I don't know. Um, but I don't know. It's just kind of like they made they, they pumped this this made up character up for no reason at all. Mortal Kombat has so many different characters to choose from, so many different storylines. I just feel like it was so much missed potential. The fighting in this was okay. Like I said before, uh, you know, the choreography and everything was just kind of eh, whatever. When was the actual tournament supposed to happen? They talked about the tournament, you know, uh, with um, Outer World, you know, winning nine rounds or nine championships. And there was a tournament that was about to happen. And I was under the impression that Earthrealm was, you know, training <clears throat> and the Elder Gods were the ones who stepped in if anybody kind of interrupted any type of training before the tournament. I thought those were pretty solid rules that were in place for Mortal Kombat. But um, the logic with uh, Shane Soon was that, okay, we, we've got to look at the Earthrealm's, you know, fighters. They all are bums. We can beat them, no problem. Uh, instead of waiting for the tournament to beat them so we can properly take over Earthrealm, let's just go kill them before the tournament and make put all our focus on that. And it's kind of like, okay, so what is the purpose of that or whatever? And where are the Elder Gods or Raiden or whoever is, you know, supposed to be preventing that? At one point when, you know, they kind of storm in and just start beating everybody up from Earthrealm um, after Kano has sold them out, uh, Raiden is just on vacation somewhere. Like he's just gone and then he shows up later. That type of stuff, I'm kind of like, all right, who's... Who's making the decisions here? Like, uh, I don't know. Those, those are types of things where I'm kind of like, it takes me out of the story because it's so silly. Sub-Zero and Scorpion, uh, that whole dynamic is a fan favorite. People love to see. I mean, you can make a movie on those two dudes alone. But the intro, as, as dope as it was in this movie, um, the way it played out for the rest of the movie probably had no meaning to anybody who isn't familiar to the game. Um, I mean, they kept talking about the Lin Kuei and uh, all of this stuff, but we really didn't have any sense of like why these two guys are at war other than the fact that they are just uh, two rivals. Um, and Scorpion, for whatever reason, is speaking Chinese, Japanese, and English. I, I was thrown off by that. Like, what was the purpose of that? Um, I don't know. Uh, that gave me a brain freeze of like, okay, if you're talking to, um, you know, Scorpion's wife and kid who don't understand, you know, what you're saying already. And then you switch it up to another language. They don't speak. I don't know. It was just, that just minor stuff or whatever. But the intro, the first five to 10 minutes of the movie was dope to me. I thought the whole movie was going to kind of follow that track, but it did not. Kano seems to be the fan favorite. Uh, I do think he had the best punchlines. He's probably the most memorable. I I probably was expecting Kano to look a different way just based on like some of the, the, the past video games, um, iterations or whatever, but he was fine. Uh, also, I like Jax. I thought Jax was pretty cool. Um, you know, he met expectations in my opinion. I like the way they did his arms and started them off short and then he uh, got like his full muscle mechanical arms as he got his Akana. Uh, Sonya Blade was just kind of okay. I, I, I'm, you know, some people I've seen comments pretty hard on her. 
But um, I, she probably could have been better, um, tougher or something like that. Maybe they'll recast her in the next one. But I thought she was just okay. Um, she didn't really take me out of the story. Again, Cole did. He was just not that good, in my opinion. Johnny Cage definitely should have been in this movie. Uh, I was actually expecting him. I don't. I, again, I hate to keep harping on this Cole young person, but Johnny Cage could have easily been swapped out for him, and you know, you would have had a better movie. Um, at least give Johnny Cage a, a, a cameo, like maybe somebody in the background is watching their mobile phone and, you know, the, the news is talking about Johnny Cage's biggest movie or something like that. Something like a TMZ episode or something is on in the background and Johnny Cage is in some scandal or some drama. I don't know. Something that could, you know, let us know that we're in this Earth realm world where he exists other than just kind of hinting around to him like, yep, yeah, you got to gotta wait till the next movie that we do in a couple of years in order to see Johnny Cage. I don't know. That was a missed opportunity. At the end of the day, the movie was watchable. It was, uh, you know, entertaining for the most part. There were just some, a lot of things that took me out of it. I think Cole Young being like, you know, the, the focus of everything was just a bad move, a bad decision overall. I think that was the most critical mistake in my opinion, especially when you know, uh, like I said, he, he started out a bum and like within two days, he's like got these leadership skills and he's beating up Goro and is, you know, kind of like one of the prime guys. He's, you know, and, and why does Scorpion need him to help, you know, fight Sub-Zero? Like, you know, Sub-Zero and Scorpion are, you know, bitter enemies and Scorpion is set up to be the best, you know, ninja in all time or something like that is the way they kind of set him up. So why is Cole even helping them fight once those guys are like battling it out. That was, um I don't know, that was kind of, it made me be like, dude, get out the way so I can see what I really want to see. So uh, I think a whole the whole thing of not giving the fans really what they want um, is a problem. Like, you know, that was an issue. Anyway, what did y'all think about this? Am I totally off? Um, I tried to leave my brain at the door on this because this is you know, a popcorn movie to me. And I look at this the way I look at a Godzilla movie. Like I really just am watching it to watch Godzilla and King Kong fight and kill stuff. Or if it's just Godzilla, just watch Godzilla tear stuff up. I don't care about the humans. I don't care about what they're talking about. You know, they're arguing and, you know, all of them are forgettable. I just want to see the monsters fight. So this, kind of, this is kind of how it was with Mortal Kombat. I just really wanted to see the fighting in the tournaments and if you have the ability to tell some cool stories with all of these awesome backstories that they have set up, then do it. But if you can't pull it off, leave it alone and just let these guys beat each other's brains out. Peace.